So I've really been wanting to get some internet ran out to my shop, but my modem is over here and my shop's over here, 225 feet away. But that's okay because I'm gonna bridge that gap with UV's wireless bridge and ceiling mounted rider. So like I was saying, this is a wireless bridge, not to be confused with a Wi-Fi extender. They're directional, meaning they need to be aimed at one another for best performance. They really don't send or receive signal from the backsides of the units. The two outdoor units I'm using are completely waterproof and actually rated to bridge a gap 1.8 miles. Now I can't verify that one way or the other. All I can tell you is they work great for my situation, which is 225 feet. Installing this system is very simple. It's almost plug and play. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I install and set mine up. Then we're gonna test the signal strength. And if you stick around with me to the end, I'm gonna tell you about my special discount code to save you some money on every UV product you see in this video. Anyway, meet me upstairs and I'll show you the kit and we'll get started on the install. By the way, my internet is still a cellular provider, but this kit will work with any high-speed internet, including Starlink. So here's a quick look at everything I have for this project. I've already unboxed these. They're gonna come a little neater package than this. For the main package that contains the bridge, their terminology, we have a master unit and a slave unit. We have a couple of Cat5 cords, which are four or five foot in length. Then we have two power supplies which are going to power each one of these units and it is going to use these cat5 cords as the power supply cord then we have a mining hardware kit which contains two brackets for each unit you don't have to have these to mine them but it's just going to create a much neater much more professional look and we're going to have the ability to adjust these a little bit keep everything straight or keep everything plumb then i have that rider or what they call a ceiling mount wi-fi access and it comes with the unit and a power cord there's some things I purchased separate. I have a couple of different lengths of cords and I also have a flat cord. I believe this is a Cat 8 and that's going to be great for going through the window. It's very flat so I'll still be able to shut my window. I have a couple of these cable writing pieces and they're going to come in handy anywhere that I have to go through the ceiling or the wall. That's just going to give me a much more neater finished look. Then I have what you call a step bit and that's going to be great for drilling those holes. I have to go through some metal a couple of times and that's going to come in handy. It's just going to be a lot easier to prep the brackets right here. Some things I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this plate. I don't need that for my application. One screw, we can drop that. It comes with these hose clamps. That's what's in a whole unit to the mounting bracket. Phillips head will loosen those. They're going to feed right through these slots in the unit. Then we can put them back together, tighten them up some. Then I can slide it over and just snug it down for now. I want to be able to adjust these once I get them in place. And that leaves me with way too much clamp. So I'm going to snip some of that off. I then want to put something on here to create a seal so no water can get in behind my bracket and get into my holes that I drill for the screws. Silicone will work great. However, I have this buell tape, so I'm just going to use that. I'm just going to put a piece at the top and the sides right where my screws are going to be then if any water ever does get in them screw holes it can still get out from the bottom then i'm going to unscrew both of these wing nuts and that's going to make it very convenient for making the bracket i'm going to start installing everything right at the heights with my master unit i just want to get a straight line to go by i'm just going to use four roofing screws to hold the bracket in place then i can reattach the main part of the bracket with those wing nuts and being this is directional i want to go ahead and get it aimed where the other unit's going to be then I can finish tightening up those hose clamps. Then I'm going to take that flat Cat 8 cable that I have and connect it to the POE port. Being this is the master unit, we want to be sure that this switch is on the A position. I'll go ahead and write my cable. You're going to be sure you want to leave some sort of loop in it for water to drip down. When it runs down here, it will drip off. It won't be able to run back up. And that cord is so flat that I'm still able to shut my window. But I'm also going to leave another drip edge down here so any water can drip off. That cable coming from the master unit will connect to the power supply unit at the POE port. And then I'll connect this yellow wire to the LAN port and this yellow cable is gonna plug into the back of my modem. After it's powered up, you can press the reset button to change which channel it's gonna be on. You want everything to be on the same channel. I know I have a wood block behind my metal where this light is mounted to. So that's just gonna be the best place to make this bracket. Go ahead and get the direction right on it. And this is where that step bit and one of them cable accesses is gonna come in handy. I'm just drill a hole right through my vented soffit, but I will need to run my power cable through first. And we'll go ahead and connect that and be sure to leave a drip point in it. On this unit, I have a red end cable. That's going to be the power supply. It is also connected to the POE port on this receiving unit. In my attic, that red end cable gets connected to the POE port on the power supply. And then the LAN port gets connected with a cable. And that cable will go directly to the wireless access port. Then I'm going to plug it up to a receptacle that I already have up here in my attic. I have another receptacle in my attic. And that's where I'm going to get the power source for my wireless access port. Since this is a receiving unit, we're going to want to flip the switch to the B position. And I want to pair this unit to the master unit so i'm gonna hit the reset button 
and two on the same channel. And when all the lights on the side look like this, you should have Wi-Fi. Now the OCD in me really wants to put this access point dead center of this room. So I have to figure out exactly where that's at. I know some in the ballpark of 40 feet, but I don't have a tape measure that long. Luckily, Akbot has sent me this laser to try it. It's actually a laser and tape measure all in one. I'm able to climb up on my ladder, place the measure tape against the wall, shoot the laser to the other side and get my measurement with 38 feet, 11 and three quarters of an inch. Then I'll take my laser and shoot it until I'm just shy of 19 foot, six inches. And I'll mark that, that's gonna be dead center of my shop. You can tap a button and you'll see that it it changes which side of the measuring tape that the laser is reading from. You can either read it from the front or the back. The laser has an LED screen and a built-in rechargeable battery. You can change the units. You can put it in feet, inches, or meters. So no matter what measuring scale you use, this tape measure will be able to do the job. It can be really handy if you're trying to get an inside measurement like this, because sometimes you can hold it up here and your tape just don't fall over like that. So you can just take your laser, put it up there, get your measurement. Say you were cutting out a board for that window. You go right to your board, use the tape measure that's attached, measure out your board, mark it and cut it. Everything's right here in the palm of your hand. Two tools built into one, no need to have a separate laser and tape measure. I have this link below along with a limited time discount code if you want to check it out. For the rider itself, the mounting bracket removes. I can simply just hold the bracket up and run two screws in. And the rider just simply snaps and twists in place. When I'm gonna pop that back off, I can then take that step bit and drill till I'm at a one inch hole. And this hole will actually be above the rider. So it's gonna hide my cords. And you can see that step bit does a really clean job of drilling through this metal. I drop my power cord and my cat cord in from the ceiling. Then I can go ahead and stick these plugs on. And that really makes for a clean install. And once you have the power hooked up to that router, if the blue light is solid, that means you have normal operation and you should be able to take your phone and find your Wi-Fi connection. So yeah, that was a pretty simple install. You don't have to be tech savvy to knock this one out. Well, what about performance? How fast is it compared to being in the house right directly next to the modem? Well, I can tell you as far as just casually browsing, I can't tell any difference. But we're on fast.com, we're pulling up some data. And yes, I know my internet is gonna be slower than most, being it's with a cellular provider, and there's the results. And here we are in the house, right next to the main rider. So it's really not any significant drop in performance. So UV really not glad to park on this one. This is a great system, very easy to install. By the way, those outside units are waterproof. You don't have to have the mounting brackets, but I do recommend them. I think they add for a more professional look and it'll give you the ability and more flexibility to aim these units at one another. However, the units do have slotted holes on the back so you can mine them directly to the wall. However, using those slots on the back are really gonna take away your ability to dial in and really aim them things precisely at one another. If you check the link below, I provided a 15% off discount code for all UV products used in this video. Now that is a limited time offer, so you need to jump on it right away. I'll have a date down there for when that code is no longer any good. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.